Hello, good morning, and welcome to Sycamore Creek Church in Potterville. My name's Kevin, and I am the worship leader for our church community. It's been a busy week, so I am recording from my car while my daughter Naomi is at soccer practice. Um, but I'm really glad that you're joining us for worship. We are starting a new series this week based on the book that we're studying in small groups, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. I hope that you've picked up a book and joined a group. We're going to kick things off today talking about icebergs, which is a really important concept in the book. And so that raises our discussion question, which is, how much ice do you like to have in your drink? Are you one of these no ice, I want as much drink as I can get? Or do you love your ice? I love my ice. Um, I don't want, you know, an insane amount, like full to the top, but give me, you know, a half a glass of ice when I'm having a cold drink. I want it to be cold. So that'll get us going. Please chat, join the chat, talk about, uh, talk about your ice preferences. And uh, yeah, we're going to sing a couple songs together. Please join me.
Grace and peace be with you. Hi, my name is Mark. I'm the pastor at Sycamore Creek Church in Potterville. I'm thrilled you've joined us today for our online worship service as we start a new series, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. And we're going to be talking today about actually emotionally unhealthy spirituality. We're going to talk about the problem that we're trying to address. And hopefully throughout this series, we're going to move toward greater emotional and spiritual health. Now, a huge part of what we're doing is to focus this morning on God and on Jesus. And in order to help us do that, I have a worship practice I'm going to invite you to participate in. I'm going to light a candle here, and I invite you to get a candle and to light that candle at home as an act of worship. As I light my candle, you light yours. Today, we look to the light of that candle as a reminder of God's presence with us, God's presence in all of our lives. And that's really the goal of emotionally healthy spirituality, that all of us, every part of us, would be open and available to Jesus and to the power of God's grace in our lives. As we keep that in mind, I'm gonna invite you to pray with me. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you today for how we are made. We thank you for for all of our being, for the, the highs of life, for the lows of life, Uh, for all the things that we experience and think. And and God, we pray that through this series, through our worship today, that we might invite you into all of those areas. If if there are areas, God, where we are struggling this morning, may we invite you into that struggle. If there are things that we are celebrating and we are just so excited about, God, we invite you into that celebration. May you be a part of all of our lives and may we give ourselves completely to you today in worship. Amen. I want to invite you to continue praying with me as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Will you please join me in that prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today, as we start this series, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality, we have with us Tom Arthur, uh, the lead pastor of Sycamore Creek Church and the campus pastor of what will be our new Eastwood campus coming up soon. Tom is going to be with us to talk about emotionally unhealthy spirituality, but first here is our host for this morning. Welcome to Sycamore Creek Church in Potterville. We're glad that you've joined us for worship. My name is Danielle, and I am the director of our children's ministry at Sycamore Creek Church in Potterville. I'm also our host for today, and I'm glad that you've joined us for worship. Please take a moment and fill out a connection card at Sycamore Creek Church org slash connection. We'll refer to that connection card again later in the worship service. Connect with us for the first time and we'll send you a free book. Another great way to connect is by chatting and commenting on the worship service. We would love to interact with you. If today's worship is helpful for you, please take a moment to share it with your friends on social media. You can share the worship service and use our hashtag, SCC Potterville. Today's message begins with this. There's so much more to your story than what's on the surface. God is calling you to dive deeper, to see how your joys, losses, dreams and experiences have shaped you. What will the Holy Spirit speak to your soul through emotionally healthy spirituality? This year, Sarah and I had just an abundance of peaches on our peach tree, like thousands of peaches. I'm talking about so many peaches and they were so beautiful. We'd take them down off of the peach tree and take them inside and start to eat them. 
But after eating several peaches, we started to notice a particular problem. If you weren't looking very closely on some of them, there was a teeny itsy bitsy little hole. And when you bit into it, that peach that looked so beautiful on the outside was full of worms on the inside. And so you got, well, maybe a mouth full of some extra protein along with those peaches. How could something that looks so delicious, so beautiful on the outside be so rotten on the inside? Or recently, Sarah and I celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary. We've been married for 25 years and we celebrated at the English Inn. We had a photographer that came out. We didn't even get a professional photographer for our wedding. And she created absolutely beautiful photos of us and our kids, made us look so amazing in these pictures. But what you don't see in these beautiful pictures is that that morning, right before we were getting ready to leave to go to our 25th wedding anniversary photo shoot, we had a big argument. And it was one of those arguments where we realized on the drive there that we really had to resolve this. We had to work through this conflict or we would be celebrating our anniversary with this thing in the background, this elephant in the room. And so behind these beautiful pictures was this, well, significant conflict that we had. How can something that looks so beautiful on the outside be so problematic just outside of the frame. That's the problem that we wanna deal with today. How can something look so good on the outside and be so problematic on the inside? As our team was talking about this series, Tiffany Norday, our worship producer, pointed us to Chesley Christ. Chesley was Miss USA in 2019 and went on to represent the United States in Miss Universe, and she finished in the top 10 Chesley Chris basically had it all, right? I mean, she was Miss USA, top 10 in the Miss Universe. Unfortunately, behind this beautiful woman was a really challenging, well, mental health landscape. Her last Instagram post, she wrote, may this day bring you rest and peace. I said it was her last Instagram post because later that day, she died by suicide. Now here's someone who has everything as far as external beauty goes, but how can something that's so beautiful be so challenged behind the scenes? If you're struggling with suicide today, know that there is help. There's a new hotline, 988. Call the Suicide Prevention Hotline and get the resources that you need. You are not alone. Or think about our own country, America. It's the richest nation in the world. It's maybe even the richest nation in all of history. And yet we have more school shootings than, well, any other nation by far in the whole world. How can something that looks so good on the outside have so much violence and hurt and pain on the inside? So here's a question for you today to put in the chat or turn to a neighbor and talk about. When have you experienced something being so beautiful on the outside, but on the inside, it's just full of rot? Let's talk about that.
Today we're starting a new series called Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. It's actually a church-wide campaign. And so many of our small groups are studying this book by Peter Scazzaro, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. And if you sign up for a small group, you can get a free book. There's also some extra resources that if you want to pick them up in the micro bookstore, there's a workbook, there's a daily prayer guide. The book, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality, is free. The workbook and the prayer guide, you got to pay a little bit in the micro bookstore. We're also taking some inspiration from a church out in New York that's been working with us called Liquid Church. And the problem that we want to deal with today is this. How can something look so good on the outside and be so problematic on the inside? It's kind of like the iceberg. What you see above the surface of the water is 10%, but underneath the surface is the 90% that will sink the Titanic. Or I love canoeing, like on the Grand River behind me here. This past weekend also, I was on a two-day overnight trip on the Manistee River. And you have to, when you're canoeing, dodge these little teeny logs that are sticking up out of the surface of the water. But underneath the surface of the water is the 90% of the log that if you are not careful, it will tip you over and ruin your whole trip. When it comes to our life, 10% are the external behaviors, the things that you see and do, the going to church, the praying. But the 90%, those are the emotions, the motivations underneath the surface, the fear, the jealousy, the anxiety. Those are the things that come out in moments of stress. Most Christians focus on the 10% and only scratch the surface rather than digging deep into what God has for us. You see, we do all the right things. We go to the right church. We read the right books. We pray the right prayers. We listen to Christian music. We go to the right movies and don't go to the wrong movies. We advocate for all the right things. We're part of the right political party, but underneath is jealousy, fear, anxiety, repressed anger, envy. We sing praise songs on Sunday, but we ignore the fear within. And when we do look within, what we see, it frightens us. And so we just ignore it even more. It is possible for things to look pretty bad on the surface, that 10% that you can see, but underneath the surface, the 90% to be really pretty good. Uh, take, for example, Paul. He's one of the first missionaries of the church, and he wrote a lot of letters to different churches that he helped found. And in one of them, he's writing the letter from prison. It's his letter to the church at Ephesus. It's called Ephesians. And here's what Paul says. I pray that from God's glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Did you catch that inner strength? That's like the stuff below the surface. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. Here it is again, this depth, these roots that are going deep down. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep God's love is. Here it is again, Paul talking about something that's wide and deep and long and high. It's not just something that's just the 10% that you see above the surface. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God made complete, the fullness of life. And we're talking about a maturity here, a spiritual maturity, an emotional maturity. Those two things, when they go hand in hand, so, so, so beautiful, not just on the surface, but underneath the surface as well. So here's the point of this message today. In fact, it's the point of the whole series. It's impossible to be spiritually mature while remaining emotionally immature. You can't be emotionally one inch deep and spiritually mature. Spiritual maturity requires emotional maturity, emotional depth as well. Many of us lack an emotional EQ, an emotional intelligence. A part of emotional intelligence is understanding how we come across to other people, how other people perceive us. I had an unexpected experience of this lately where somebody else perceived me in a different way than I perceived myself. You see, I went to support Mark Klaus in the Dapper Dads contest and challenge. And 
I was just uh, there in the audience, but I thought, you know what, it's Dapper Dad, so I'm gonna dress up, I'm gonna be dapper. And I was telling my kids about this and they were like, well, what does dapper mean? And I said, well, it's, you know, you're dressed up, like you look good in a kind of classic sort of way. And after I explained what dapper meant to them, they said to me, dad, you're not dapper. I wore a dapper bow tie and mismatched shirt. I mean, I thought I looked pretty good, but according to my kids, they perceived me as not just dapper, but they added, Dad, you don't have any swag either. Duh. Here I was thinking that I had both. Now that's a sort of silly story, but it gets at a deeper point that a lot of times in conflict, we have an inability to perceive reality from somebody else's perspective besides just our own. It requires us to ask, what in this situation do I need to take responsibility for? What have I contributed to the conflict? And that, of course, requires vulnerability, but so many of us lack the ability to be vulnerable with those around us. What we do instead is we stay on the surface. Our talk stays at the 10% rather than going deep. It reminds me of Chad Sanders' poem, Let's Talk. Let's talk. Let's talk about sports. Let's talk about cheese. Let's talk about the courts. Let's get takeout Chinese and we can chat about work or I can get your appraisal of the first few seasons of the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. What you reading? What you eating? What's the word on the street? Who's in the news? Celebrity views? Did you see my retweet? Let's talk D&D. Let's talk peak TV. Let's talk gaming PCs. Let's talk loose leaf tea. Let's talk all day. I got so much to say. Just remember we agreed. I don't talk about me. Not like the real me. No one needs to know all that stuff. There's enough fluff in the world to keep our conversation percolating. There's no need to dig deep. We can keep it on the surface where the wounds heal quickly. Deep is where I share more than I should to you. Deep is where I have, where I bear more than I care to. Deep is where I've been hurt before. So I implore you, let's keep it light, all right? So we talk about sex, but never about love. We talk about blessings, but never about loss. We talk about the joy, not the pain. We only air fresh linen, not the stained. If we talk about God, we keep it simple and safe. Talk of doubts or confusion or anger or sadness is unacceptable. God is great. God is good. To say much more would just be rude. Rewind. <laughs> if we talk about God, we keep it simple and safe. Talks of doubts or confusion or anger or sadness is unacceptable. God is great. God is good. To say much more would just be rude. So let's talk Star Wars and Costco and Oscars and Loki. Let's talk Seinfeld and Python and pub karaoke. Let's talk Big Ten versus SEC. Let's talk Iron Fist versus Shang-Chi. I'll talk about anything, you see, that keeps me from dealing with me. I was trying to go deep with a colleague of mine and say, hey, over the last like time, a decade or so of your experience as a pastor, what's the biggest mistake that you've made? And what this colleague of mine told me was that it was not removing a staff person and a leader sooner than they did. And I was somewhat familiar with this situation. And this is the kind of person who would stand up and say the crazy thing, you know, and you're like, oh my gosh, what in the world did they just say? And this person was always right and never wrong. And conflict was this super aggressive kind of thing rather than a team working out. And, you know, this particular person didn't exhibit all of these situations or these characteristics, but you know this kind of person. It's like, they're always right. Their, their politics are always the right politics. And sometimes it feels a little bit like you start talking to a bumper sticker or a meme. You know, you ask this person, how are you doing? And they say, well, too blessed to be stressed or you say, I'm sorry for that painful thing that happened to you. And they say, well, everything happens for a reason. That really frustrating thing that didn't go the way that you wanted it to go for, you applied for that job and didn't get it. Well, God never closes a door that he doesn't also open a window. You've been really facing a lot lately, a lot of struggles. Well, God never gives you more than you can handle. What are we going to do about this 
super complex situation in our country? Jesus is the answer. How do you keep going? God is my co-pilot. You just have to let go and let God. Eventually you get so frustrated talking to this person that you're just shoving it all away. And you cut this person off and then they tell you, well, Jesus said his followers would be persecuted too. You know, all of us struggle with this. We have a lack of self-perception of how others see us and a lack of vulnerability. So here's another question to put in the chat. Turn to somebody next to you or type in the comments. How good are you at being vulnerable? How good are you at seeing yourself the way others see you? And what would your closest friend or family member say? Let's talk about that. So throughout this series, we're talking about emotionally healthy spirituality. And here's a basic equation for what emotionally healthy spirituality is. Emotional health plus contemplative spirituality equals emotionally healthy spirituality. So you may wonder, well, what is emotional health and what's contemplative spirituality? Well, here's a definition for each of those. Emotional health is the ability to be self-aware and love others well. And contemplative spirituality equals slowing down your life to be with Jesus. All of us on some level struggle with a false self. The false self is the personality we project to God and others to impress, survive, avoid exposure, or get our way. We look so good on the outside, but on the inside, there's all of these motivations of fear, anxiety, people-pleasing, manipulation, defensiveness, self-promotion, blame-shifting, avoiding weakness, not self-aware. We're in this post-COVID world right now, or at least more of COVID is behind us than it is hopefully in front of us. And we are all just emotionally worn out. We're all burned out. We've all been through this collective two and a half years of trauma. We end up feasting on Sunday, and then we famine the rest of the week. Here's what Peter Scazzaro says are the top 10 symptoms of emotionally unhealthy spirituality. Number one is using God to run from God, using scripture for my own purposes to do my own will rather than God's will. Number two is ignoring the emotions of anger, sadness, and fear. Not being honest with myself and others about the hurts and the pains below the surface. Number three is dying to the wrong things. Denying the wrong things in life, the healthy God-given joys of life, friendships, family, recreation, taking care of yourself, while finding it difficult to die to my self-protection, my judgmentalism, my lack of vulnerability or self-awareness. Number four, denying the past's impact on the present. 
not considering how my past family dynamics and situations and events in life are playing out again over in a script in the present with my current friendships and relationships. Number five, dividing life into secular and sacred compartments. Compartmentalizing God to, quote, Christian activities like church and prayer while ignoring God when you're doing chores or shopping or just out recreating. Number six, doing for God instead of being with God. Evaluating my own spirituality based on how much I accomplish for God. Number seven, spiritualizing away conflict. I'm talking about here missing out on true peace by smoothing over conflicts and disagreements rather than, like Jesus, raising conflict in the face of false peace. Number eight, covering over brokenness, weakness, and failure. Not speaking freely about my failures, my mistakes, the places where I have failed in life. Number nine, living without limits. Trying to do it all. Trying to bite off more than you can chew. Number 10, judging the spiritual journeys of others. Finding myself occupied and bothered by other people's failures and mistakes rather than focusing more on myself. Now, if you answered the last chat question saying you're good at being vulnerable and being open with others, but nothing in that list spoke to you, well, then I have a really good therapist I'd like to recommend to you. So here's a, another question for you. Put this in the chat. Which of these list of 10 is God speaking to you most about right now? Let's talk about that. Staying in touch with God in the depths <laughs> requires a kind of silence and solitude to become aware of the monsters within you that will be something you take to God and let others around you help you take them to God. To be aware of the places where your anxiety is pushing you away from God and rather let that anxiety push you toward God. In fact, almost all the people who come to Jesus in the New Testament come because something is going on that's creating an anxiety. And that anxiety drives them to Jesus. There's nothing like tests and trials to destroy your false perceptions of reality, your illusions about what is real. Adversity can strip you of those illusions and grow in you a kind of authentic life. We can allow the setbacks and the brokenness in life to drive us deeper into God, to drive us deeper into an experience of knowing that God's love isn't something that we earn. It's given to us 100% as a gift, a gift of grace from God. 
let's remember again what emotionally healthy spirituality is. It's emotional health plus contemplative spirituality. And emotional health is the ability to be self-aware and love others well, and contemplative spirituality is slowing down your life to be with Jesus. Dallas Willard, the author and philosopher, says that the Christian life is about ruthlessly eliminating hurry. All right, now that we've got that done, what's next? Contemplation is creating enough space in your life to go deep and wide with God, and that doesn't happen in a moment. It's a process, it's a journey over time. One of my practices over the years has been to set one day aside for a spiritual retreat to get away and do this sort of internal contemplative work. But recently I have let the demands take over my time and I haven't done it probably for about a year. I've gotten out of the habit of it. And recently I recognized this and realized it and I set aside a day to finally get out, out to the St. Francis Center up in DeWitt. And I spent the day there in silence and solitude and reading and praying and journaling. And I was looking for and listening for the Word of God. What was God going to speak to me that day? And one of the things I found myself journaling about was the weight that I find feeling on my shoulders lately. There's so many big, huge things that I'm helping manage. The adoption of a church, the remodeling of a parsonage, the remodeling of a building, the bringing on a new pastor, putting my kids in a new school, moving my family into a new part of Lansing. And the weight of all of those things was struggling, was bearing down on me. And while I was in that quiet contemplation, I heard God speak to me. God said, everything that has been worth carrying the weight of the world has already been carried by Jesus on the cross. Everything that is worth carrying has already been carried by Jesus on the cross. Now in that moment, I felt a sort of conviction and I confessed to God, me picking up these things to carry, which were not really mine to fully carry to begin with. And I made an effort, I made a commitment to God to let those things go, to not carry them the way that I had, but to carry them with the help of God. And then when I got back from that spiritual retreat, I decided I need to call my therapist and set up an appointment. I hadn't been seeing a counselor for a while, so I picked up the phone and I called and set up an appointment with my counselor. You see, my idol in life, the thing that I put before God too often is success or perfection. And one of my biggest fears is the lack of success or failure. Or if I go a little bit deeper, it's not even failure. It's looking like a failure. Emotionally healthy spirituality is giving ourselves enough time and space to do that sort of work, to have emotional health and contemplative spirituality. Mother Teresa says this, we all must take the time to be silent and to contemplate, especially those who live in big cities. I always begin my prayers in silence, for it is in the silence of the heart that God speaks. Imagine a faith community that walked alongside of you for a long period of time, helping you develop this sort of mature spirituality. One of the main ways that we try to do this at Sycamore Creek is in our small groups. And right now we're starting this church-wide campaign where so many small groups, there's groups for men, there's groups for women, there's groups for everyone, there's groups for LGBTQ folks. There, there's groups that are all studying this book, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality, together. And so we're doing this on Sunday morning together, but we're going deeper in a small group. Pick up that brochure take a look at it. Go to sycamorecreekchurch.org slash small groups and sign up for one or more of those small groups. And you'll find also all kinds of events in that brochure as well. I'd like to go back to that prayer that Paul prayed for the Ephesians. And as we're praying it to close this message today, listen for the depths which Paul talks about. I pray that from God's glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. 
then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. And all who wanted that sort of emotionally healthy spirituality, that sort of depth, said or typed, Amen. Thank you, Tom. I have a couple quick announcements for us. The first announcement is that we'd love to help you get connected. We'd love to help you grow in the character of Christ. You can do those things. Take next steps. Get connected by filling out a digital connection card at sycamorecreekchurch.org slash connection. You'll see there's all sorts of things on there that you can sign up, boxes you can check, information that you can share with us. Take a moment and fill out that digital connection card. We are continuing in our groups and events month. We have all kinds of great things that are happening this fall at Sycamore Creek Church. You can see a complete list of those things and you can sign up to join a group or be a part of an event at sycamorecreekchurch.org slash smallgroups. This fall, as you notice today, we are kicking off a study of emotionally healthy spirituality. We're doing that both in our worship services and in our small groups. Get connected with an emotionally healthy spirituality group and you'll be able to go much deeper into the content that we're studying this fall and you'll get to know people better and it helps you to grow in your faith. In order to encourage you to do that, we'll offer a free book, a free Emotionally Healthy Spirituality book if you join an Emotionally Healthy Spirituality small group. You also notice in our groups and events that coming up on November 11 and 12, we have our men's retreat, which is called Crash. Registration opens today for the Crash Men's Retreat. If you're interested in more information on that or you'd like to register, you can email me at Mark at sycamorecreekchurch.org. I wanna invite you as we kick off Emotionally Healthy Spirituality today to take our series challenge and that is to attend worship every Sunday this month to engage our Emotionally Healthy Spirituality content. Throughout the month of October, we will be presenting content from Emotionally Healthy Spirituality in our worship services and we think it has the power to be life transforming. I'm challenging you today to attend worship every Sunday or whenever you're able to get it online throughout the month of October. I wanna thank you for your giving to support the mission of Sycamore Creek. We could not accomplish all the things we accomplished without your giving. And I also wanna remind you that when you give to support Sycamore Creek, giving changes you. It's an incredible spiritual practice. It, it helps increase your generosity. And I wanna thank you for being a part of that increase in generosity and for all that we accomplish as, to further the mission of Sycamore Creek. One of the ways we accomplish our mission is through our staff. Thank you so much for your giving. That helps us to have a staff. It's not just me by myself accomplishing the mission of our church. Last week, our staff was able to go on a staff retreat for two days and stay overnight. I want to thank the family that donated the use of their beautiful cabin on a lake for our staff to stay in. Uh, and we had a wonderful time getting away and forming deeper connections with one another and having fun and being renewed so that we can continue the work of accomplishing the mission of our church. Thank you for your support of our staff and for our ability to continue as a church to support the mission of our church. Here's Kevin with our final worship song. Of sin I resign 
Have a great week. Go in peace. Hope to see you again soon.